Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today we are going to describe the structure and properties of water. Agua. Water. Dihydrogen monoxide. As always, breaking it down a little bit, first thing we're going to do, describe the structure of a water molecule. What does it look like? And then two, we're going to discuss the physical properties of water. So how does its structure relate to some of the unique things that we observe about water? All right, so first, a water molecule consists of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, united by polar covalent bonds. So as you take a look at the image on your screen, we've got our molecule of, whoa, our molecule of water, went a little crazy there. We've got our one central atom of oxygen, two atoms of hydrogen, not shown here, but we've got our two lone pairs. Now, some things just to keep in mind. Recognize that the electronegativity of hydrogen and the electronegativity of oxygen are different enough to cause these bonds to be polar covalent. In other words, the oxygen atom is gonna hog those electrons. What that does is it creates polar bonds with the dipole facing the oxygen. This also creates a molecular dipole overall with again the negative region up by those two negative lone pairs of electrons near the oxygen atom. It's also kind of neat to look at the water molecule in this electrostatic potential diagram. Again, notice the more red the region is, the more negative, the more blue the region, the more positive. So keep in mind, it's this polar nature of the water molecule that allows for hydrogen bonding between water molecules, which contributes to some of water's unique properties. So you take a look at the image on your screen, remember that hydrogen bonds are really those intermolecular forces of attraction in between the molecules. Remember that it's the positive end of one water molecule that's gonna be attracted to the negative end of a neighboring water molecule. Hydrogen bonding, IMF. Okay, so the first property that we observe uh, that is related to this unique structure of water is surface tension. Um, and it's just the inward force or pull that tends to minimize the surface area of a liquid. Due to the hydrogen bonding that occurs in between water molecules, water is able to do a really good job of pulling other molecules of water in, creating a relatively high surface tension. We can observe this many different ways. Uh, if you've ever watched those little water skeeters just sort of like scoot, scoot, scoot across the water and wonder why they don't drown. Uh, many times on a nice clean car or on this leaf, we see water bead up. Again, it's that property of surface tension whereby the water molecules are pulling the other water molecules in, creating that high surface tension. Second property of water that is due to the hydrogen bonding that occurs in between the water molecules is its relatively high boiling point. And when we think about what's happening when water is boiling, we're moving from the liquid phase where we have relatively lower kinetic energy to the gas phase with relatively higher kinetic energy. And in the process, we've overcome the intermolecular forces in between the water molecules. And thanks to the really strong hydrogen bonding that occurs in between the water molecules, the boiling point of water is relatively high. As you take a look at this thriller of a graph in your notes, recognize that when hydrogen is bonded to the other group six elements, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, we would expect the trend to continue to decrease. But the reason why water's boiling point isn't lower than that of H2S is due to the hydrogen bonding that it can occur in between the water molecules. Notice that we see this exception as well with both HF and NH3, other molecules in which we observe hydrogen bonding. Notice that we don't see that exception occur here with the group four elements because carbon is not electronegative enough to really pull the electrons away from the hydrogen atom to allow for that hydrogen bonding to occur between molecules. And the third property that is directly related to the hydrogen bonding that occurs in between water molecules is the fact that water is actually less dense in the solid form than it is in the liquid form. This is due to the fact that those hydrogen bonds hold the water molecules in a hexagonal arrangement in the solid form, actually increasing its volume and therefore making it slightly less dense in the solid form. So check out this thriller of an animation. Liquid, boom, solid or frozen. Liquid, boom, it's cold. Liquid, solid. Again, notice the hydrogen bonds are what lock that water into that hexagonal form, which makes it take up slightly more space in the solid form than in the liquid form, making it less dense. 